brother called me last night. I don't hardly ever get to talk to him. His name's Barry. He's a hoot. Well, he called me last night, and he said, Tammy, guess what I did? I said, what? He said, I watched your video on making biscuits. I said, well, which one was it? He said, it's the one where you're wearing a moo-moo. He said, Tammy, you were wearing a moo-moo with black tennis shoes on and pink socks, striped socks. And he started laughing. He said, boy, you ain't trying to impress them with your looks, are you? I said, no, these women that like to see somebody cook don't care what they look like. What they care about how's the food look. He thought that was so funny. But I think it's cool he's watching my videos. Barry is seven years older than me. I'm 49. 50, 51. He's 56. I think a lot of men watch YouTube videos because he was watching somebody saw an old log with an old hand saw when, when I called him back. What is it? You can't see? Lord, Chris can't see to drive. I gotta go. We're back into town. He needs to, oh, he says I'm okay now. Well, Chris, tell him what you did today. What you posted? Oh, I posted my uh, garden update today. And we got a, uh, you know anybody that uh, doesn't mow their grass and you want to send them a uh, subtle reminder, you can send my grass one that I did the other day. What was the name of it? Something about grass cutting thin or something like that. That was pretty funny. If you know somebody that don't cut their grass. If you know somebody that don't cut their grass but they got a 20 year old 20 year old or even a 15 year old son at home that don't get his butt up off his butt and cut the grass and if any of you women out there have a son that you've got living with you share it and he is not cutting the grass then you need to make him don't pay somebody when you got a grown man at home and um Judy Downs Milton said, is that Chris, the bodyguard, driving? Reminds me of a policeman, not a teacher, in this video. Which one? The grass one. The grass one or this one right now, Judy? He's, he is, uh, we're driving in Amy's car because the doggone thing gets, it's averaging 37 miles to the gallon for this trip. Now, why should we drive our cars that get 20 miles to the gallon and 19 miles to the gallon when we got to go two hours? She said this when you remind her of a policeman. Okay. Um, so he told Amy we were taking her car. Well, guess what? She had to come with us. Make sure we did the right thing by her car and make sure we put gas back in it. Right, Amy? Right, she says. We gave our kids, we're on the envelope system. If you've never been on it before, you make a budget. And I can send you a spreadsheet if you want a budget spreadsheet. You make a budget and you take out the cash that you need for the month. Cash is groceries, prescriptions, doctor's visits, um, gifts, entertainment. What else? Dining out. I didn't get the cash. Dining out. I have all the cash. Anyway, so you put it in envelopes. So all the money that you're supposed to spend on gasoline goes in an envelope. All the money you're supposed to spend on groceries goes in an envelope, etc. Well, the girls got an envelope too. And they got so much money for gasoline for the month and so much money for spending for the month. I gave them, I think I gave them 25 for clothes, 25 for entertainment, they got about a hundred dollars just for clothes, entertainment, and dining out, and then they got a little bit more for gasoline. So if they want any extra money, they have to get a job. Okay. So if they spend all their money, if they decide they're going to go dine out for the first two weeks, and then they don't have any money for the last two weeks, if their cash envelope is empty, they're not getting any more. The only way they're going to get any more is if they work and earn it or if they get a job. That is our envelope system. When me and Chris were young, what was the name of that guy that had that program? 
date. Dave Ramsey taught us that when we were younger. I don't know. I guess that yes, it was his. And uh, we were we made so much less money back then. Um, Chris didn't make hardly nothing back then. And I worked part-time. And we had more money in our savings account than we've ever had. Now we don't have any money in savings. We just owe money. So we got to get back like we used to be. Dave Ramsey, yes. Chris didn't see any cash. Jessica thinks that's funny. It's in my purse and envelopes. We're together everywhere we go. So he don't need any. He's so silly. What do you need cash for? Gasoline. You don't get to buy nothing. I don't buy nothing. I might take a little bit of money out of the cash uh, groceries and get stuff like nail polish. But that, but that that's part of groceries. I mean, groceries covers everything. It covers Fish toilet pasta. paper and beauty supplies and all that stuff. Um, we are going through what city is this? Fort Oglethorpe. We are going through Fort Oglethorpe. When we were married, y'all, and I had my babies, we lived up in Trenton, Georgia. It's up in the middle of nowhere. We had to drive, how much did it take? 45 minutes to get over here? Going over the mountain? Yeah, Probably about 40 minutes. About 40 minutes over a big mountain to come down here to this little town where there was a hospital. So when I was pregnant, both times, they let me induce my labor because I live so far away from the hospital. Thank God. And this little town that we're in, it's really not that little anymore. It's grown like a weed. It's where my kids were born. Now, where we live, they wasn't anything but a big lot, um, an Ingalls. What else? They had a food lion. They had... Fast a couple places. of local like hardware store. They had fast food places. They had it was on not the many, not many fast food. Well, pretty good. It was on the interstate. It was on the interstate, they but um, we had to drive forty minutes to get anywhere, like to go to a Walmart, to go anywhere to eat that was decent to eat. The only restaurant they had there was a local restaurant that had a food bar that was really, really good home cooking. It was probably the best food bar that I've been to since. I haven't seen a food bar that good since we lived there. And there two or three good restaurants there. And then they had a Chinese restaurant. And all the women could cook. And every woman in Trenton could cook. And when we went to church and they had a spread, honey, they had a spread. And there wasn't no bull crap on the table. It was all good. Let me tell you that. Hey, LaJuana Drummond. And there wasn't nothing bought. When we came into the city of Hiram, well, Powder Springs, where our first church was, our main church. Hey, then we've been there. I'm not kidding. I worked in the kitchen to try to help. You know, we had probably, when we first started one church there, how many people were probably there? Uh, a lot. A lot. 700. 700, 800. Well, we would have something, you know, for them. My phone's ringing. Let me ignore it. We would have something uh, there. The women, seriously, would go by the grocery store and get a rotisserie chicken and bring it and sit it on the table. A rotisserie chicken. Thing yeah, but, I mean, you couldn't even serve the rotisserie chicken. I mean, who's going to open a rotisserie chicken and sit it on the table? They would bring <laughs> in... They would bring in sandwich meat and rolls and cheese and sit it on the table. They would bring in frozen dinners and sit it on the table. I'm talking about frozen uh, lasagna <laughs> and crap like that. You're talking about a hoot. Not all. There was, oh, I'm telling you, really, in that church of that many people, there was only a handful that could cook. So, buddy, when I cooked there, I had to cook for an army. And there were times when we'd had to go get food. 
is everybody would want to bring Cokes, chips, rolls. That's about all. Anyway, it got so bad the church started having to serve the meat and tell them to bring the, the sides. <laughs> but the people just didn't cook. Um, anyway, I love coming through here. It makes me think of my babies. It really does. It makes me think about being right down there at that hospital with that old man that delivered my babies. I had an old man that delivered my babies. He went in a practice full of other people. I only see one doctor, y'all, and when I was in labor, he came, washed his hands, and sat and waited. The nurses said, no doctors do that anymore. None of them. They do not do that, and he did. I loved him. Um, and there's a little donut store here, too, that we got to stay away from. Boy, did we used to eat the donuts, but me and Chris were skinny then, weren't we, baby? Back when we were young, we were so much thinner. Our metabolisms were so different. Because he's always exercised. And I never had to until now. Well, I don't exercise anyway. But. Um, well, I guess I'm going to let y'all go. I've been talking forever. It was good seeing y'all. It's nice to be up here in Chris's neck of the woods where our babies were born. It's such fond memories up here. Um, I'm going to tell you, the best time in our life so far has been when our babies were little. Everything was just so perfect. We didn't have health problems. We were young. We were in shape. Our babies were beautiful and healthy. Didn't talk back. Didn't do anything crazy. I mean, they did the normal pitch and fits and stuff. But oh my gosh, those days were just beautiful. Hey.